Okay, so now that we know how to tell the relative basicity, acidity of um, certain groups, um, let's take a look at nucleophilic carbonyl substitution. And also, sorry about my voice, y'all. Um, it's still shot from the old Miss game, um, which is a pretty fun game to go to. We got to like storm the field afterwards and stuff, as y'all know. Um, but yeah, I screamed a lot then, and so I kind of lost my voice, so I'm still getting it back. Pretty good for one day removed. But anyway, um, so nucleophilic carbonyl substitution. So the nucleophile attacks, and then you kick up these electrons on the oxygen. The electrons come back down, and then uh, the worst, or the best leaving group leaves. And so the best leaving group will be the one that is less basic. So here we know that this um, Z thing, um, is more basic than this Y thing because it is it is a carbonyl substitution nucleophilic carbonyl substitution reaction. Um, so the way I look at it is that um, so you go through this mechanism and you see that something's basic and that's your Z minus right here. Um, that is your nucleophile. So so your nucleophile is going to be a base, um, and then you let it attack, forming the tetrahedral intermediate and then you fire the electrons on on the oxygen and then they come back down and then the worst leaving group leaves so the way I see it is that like so how well the electrons will be given away is a measure of it, the basicity is a measure of how well the electrons are given away and so if you have something that is more basic than something else so your Z is more basic than Y your Z wants to give these electrons more than these electrons right here are given to this chlorine. So it wants to give the electrons more. So if we kick off, so right here for, for analyzing this tetrahedral intermediate and we're trying to figure out which one's leaving, if we kick off the Z, then it still wants to give its electrons more than this Y does. And so we're going to form this Y again, but then right back right after we form that, then the, then the base is going to come in and attack again. Now, the, if we get the Y to leave though, because it wants to give it, it doesn't want to give its electrons as badly as Z does. If we get the Y to leave, and then we form this structure right here, this Y, if it happens to attack again, will not stay as connected as this Z will. Like the Z is, is a stronger base and so it wants to give its electrons more strongly to this carbonyl than the Y does. Um, and so that's how I kind of think about it. So if, if I ever like, if you ever say something and I pause and it's about nucleophilic substitution reactions, I'm usually thinking about this whole process of, okay, which one wants to give its, which one's a stronger base so it wants to give its electrons and be more attached to the carbonyl than the weaker base. Um, so if I ever like pause and think about it, that's what I'm, that's, this is what's going through my head. Um, so if we look at these reaction mechanisms, right here you see that H2O is attacking this carbonyl and the car, so we're forming this tetrahedral intermediate. Now, if you remember correctly, the positive charge right here makes it not very basic. It makes it really acidic almost. So you have this acidic compound right here and if you, so if you add in a base, you can take off this and then you form this true tetrahedral intermediate because this is still a tetrahedral intermediate but you don't have you like your stronger base your your best leaving group right here your weaker base is still this H2O it's not the Cl um, because this is an acid and this is a neutral compound so um, so if we go back to this right here, you're comparing H3O practically to, uh, I guess it's a CL, but it's, it's these halogens, halogens um, to a HF. And so your protonated species, H3O, is going to be less basic than your HF. So that's what that's referring to. So if we go back to the mechanism now, um, if we deprotonate this, then we form OH relative to CL. OH on the periodic table is more base. So now we can compare the two neutral species 
OH is more up and to the left than the CL is, and so the CL will leave and will form the carboxylic acid. So if we go to a carbonyl halide and we add H2O and a base, then we create this carboxylic acid. All right, and that's a pretty straightforward mechanism. But okay, it even but this whole basicity thing even explains some of the exceptions. So right here, if we add some acid, we protonate this species right here, and then we add H2O. We're comparing OH. We're comparing H2O and N and NR2. So that H2O is still a better leaving group, but we have this conjugate acid right here pulling off a proton and creating an OH here and then an NR2. So now we can compare OH and NR and NR2. So which is the R's you can pretend like are H's. Um, or you can just know that they act the same way at least. Um, but if we compare O and N still if we still still comparing this, the OH is a better leaving group than the N. But as you see our product, we have a carboxylic acid. So um, what happens is if you protonate this thing, now you create the conjugate acid right here on this group. And so now if we look at it, we're comparing the acid to a neutral molecule. So the NR2H plus group is now a better leaving group than the OH minus. So then all we have to do is deprotonate our carbonyl, fire fire down those, or I guess we fire down the electrons first, then we deprotonate our carbonyl, and then we form our carboxylic acid. But the chemistry of acids and bases are still is still conserved here. So um, I hope that this video helps explain um, carbonyl substitution nucleophilic carbonyl substitution um, and that because if you can understand this process of the acids and bases you have a lot of the reactions down like at least I feel as though it'd be close to 15 um, it's probably off from that I don't know what the technical number is but um, I hope this explains it and if it doesn't um, maybe either rewatch it or just come see me and we can find out what's not clicking